Today we're talking to Neville Rowe, the chief winemaker at Shadow Tananda in the Barossa Valley. And we congratulate Shadow Tananda on being amongst our top wineries of the year for 2022 on The Real Review. So well done Neville and uh, thanks for joining us today. Yes, Hookie, okay. thank you very much. Thanks for the accolade. No problem. First question, I know you do an awful lot of Shiraz. We had a I hosted a Shiraz masterclass last night, and uh, was which was terrific. But um, it occurs to me that one in five of every Australian bottles of wine is a Shiraz. Um, this has been the case for quite a while. Shiraz is Australia's signature wine, really. How much longer do you think this will go on? Do you think this is how it's going to be forever? That Shiraz is such an enormously popular wine all around the world. Oh, I think it's going to be a long time. Um, I've recently come back from, from Europe and I went to Provine in Dusseldorf, um, which is a massive trade show and every country, every wine producing country of the world is represented there and every major wine retailer, airline, hotel chain um, are also there as, as customers and, you know, what is first and foremost when they think of Australia in their mind is Shiraz and Barossa Shiraz. And, you know, we've done well to have that at the tip of their tongues when they think Australia, and I don't see that as going away anytime soon. That's where we've made our mark. Yeah. And at Shadow Tanunda, you do, you take it the extra step and you do a range of sub-regional Barossa Shirazes. Uh, which there are at least four that I can think of, and there may be more. Um, what what more can you do to, uh, to 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 carve up the pie and make? Um, are there any more tangents that you can follow to make the Shiraz offering more diverse and more interesting? Oh, I think so. Yes, um, I mean the sub regions uh, and, and the four distinct terroirs that we make is only four of possibly more. Um, and I think in the generations to come, that will become those major sub-regions will start to be looked at in even smaller pieces and more individual vineyard or, or site-specific wines will be made. And I also think vine age, which is something that we con uh, concentrate on here, um, has, a, has a big part to tell, a story to tell. You know, we've got... 100-year-old uh, vines, Shiraz, which is made from vines older than 100 years, and two wines that are from vines that are older than 150 years of age. And, you know, that is to a wine consumer, an interested wine consumer, drinking a piece of Barossa winemaking history, Australian winemaking history that they can't get anywhere else in the world. We hear a lot about Shiraz and, and the great resource that the Barossa has in old vine Shiraz. But of course, Grenache is a variety which is now more and more fashionable and arguably even more suited to the Barossa. Um, do we have the depth of aged vines in, in Grenache as well? And will Shadow Tananda start producing 150, 150-year-old <laughs> Grenache bottlings? There is very much less uh, number of vines of that age uh, of Grenache compared to Shiraz in the Barossa Valley. Um, there, I mean, there's very small amounts of vines over that 100-year-old mark anyway. There's certainly a, a few more um, in the sort of 50 to 100-year-old zone, and so that qualifies as ancient vines anyway. Um, so, um, yeah, and it, it is well-suited, and you see those Grenache vines in the hot summers. You know, you walk in the Shiraz uh, vineyard and the, at the end of a hot sunny day and all the leaves are sort of showing you their backs and you feel them and they feel warm to the touch and the vines looks like it's had enough and the Grenache is uh, up here and sort of hello boys, you know, um, show me another hot day, I'm ready for it. Um, we're fortunate that we have some cool nights and, and the Shiraz tends to recover at night time and, and, and look bright in the morning, but uh, Grenache is, is, is a warm climate lover and uh, I think we're going to see much more development in, in that variety and in blends with that variety as well. Grenache and Shiraz, uh, great friends, um, and Mataro uh, also seems to work in that, in that uh, trilogy. Yeah, and of course you do a very uh, top-end Grenache, the Everest Grenache, which is your, your uh, iconic Grenache. 
Is that made from particularly old vines or just particularly good vines? It's, it's made from particularly old and uh, particularly good vines. Um, it's one tiny little uh, corner of a, a vineyard in Greenock, um, which is really uh, there north of 100. Bush vines, they've only, they don't have any irrigation on them. They never have, and they yield an incredibly small amount. They're, they're trained and pruned to carry one or two bunches per vine. That's it. And, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's a combination of a wonderful site and, and some really old vines. So, Neville, uh, you've just been overseas and uh, presumably with the great red wine offering that Shadow and Under has, you've probably exported quite a bit to China. Have you uh, managed to pivot from the, the loss of the Chinese market? Uh, reasonably well. Um, I hate the word pivot, but uh, that's what we did. Um, we, uh, we're fortunate. Um, Shadow and Under has always had a very strong footprint in the European market, the Northern European countries, Denmark, uh, Holland, Belgium, Germany, uh, Switzerland. Um, Shadow Tanunda is the biggest Barossa wine in Switzerland. Um, so we, we certainly gave some more attention to our um, uh, traditional markets and we we're able to find some, some growth and expansion there. Terrific. Well, I hope it all uh, continues to do well for Shadow Tsunanda. It's uh, one of the iconic properties of the Barossa. Great place to visit. Um, I think uh, the Giba family have done an amazing job with the chateau renovation and the, the land, the, the landscaping around it. Is that uh, pretty much uh, finished now and set in, set in stone or is it an ongoing project? Uh, when has a winery ever finished? Um, no. Um, it's uh, ongoing, you know. There's um, the chateau is a beautiful old building, and you know we're we're, we're always uh, you know the next phase of uh, developing a, a, a ultra premium tasting room for moi is underway, um, which is going to be great. Hugh and you'll be able to come down. And we can taste some wines together in uh, relative peace and quiet, um, rather than the. Uh, platform that is my current tasting room and uh, um, yeah no work is ongoing in the chateau always and uh, I look forward to seeing you in Melbourne on the 7th I think of August. Terrific, ah, very good, thanks for joining us Neville. Neville Rowe, Chief Winemaker, Chateau Tanunda, Barossa Valley, one of our top wineries of the year for 2022 at The Real Review, congratulations again and thanks for joining us today Neville. Thanks, Hoogie. Thank you very much. Bye, all.